Hello, so this is Ricardo. This is going to be uh, lesson three. First, I'm going to review chapter two or lesson two. We have two exercises that we're going to do here. The I am in student chapter two folder. You can download this from the Google Drive or if you haven't downloaded it yet. Uh, over here, we're going to open uh, Extended to this is going to talk about <clears throat> uh, different co dynamic colors using custom view and the exercise review lab 2 dash one. Uh, again, this is going to be conditional formatting with dynamic color and the lab 2 dash one. I already have opened those here, extended to and extended to help. So to follow along, make sure that you open those two as well. I'm going to now minimize the file manager. And the first one we're going to do is this one to touch about conditional formatting. OK, so the first thing we have to do in conditional formatting is to select the data. So we have three tasks right here. The first one say on colon on the Post column, which is C, select the top five items and color them blue. Okay, so we select the items. Remember, this is not just coloring, but dynamic color based on their values. Okay, we're talking about the top five. You could actually pick the top five in your mind here, but it's going to be a little hard. So, you allow Excel to do that on your behalf. You go then to the Home tab, Conditional Formatting. Over here we have Top and Bottom Rules. Notice that we have Top 10 Items, Top 10%, which is different than 10 Items. Is the Top 10%, it could be 1, 2, not actually 10, but 10 means 10. But notice that we don't have any 5. Okay, so we select the items, top 10, and we can actually customize it to just five right here. Notice now we can customize this. So we're going to click five. It asking for blue. So let's see if we have a blue here. We don't have a blue. So we're going to select now custom format. And also before doing that to pick the color notice then automatically select a one two three four and five okay we're gonna custom format we're gonna select field blue and on the phone I'm gonna bold it and uh, because it's gonna be blue maybe make this one white okay click OK and notice that now it picked the blue colors base on the dynamic values of those or cells How, what do you mean so notice that if i change this one instead of 109 to maybe 67 and hit enter it's still one of the top values <laughs> okay so let me make it 34 I notice that now it switches because it's no longer a top five. And we're going to change it back to 109. Okay, now the second task on that post column is to select on the average and color them yellow. To that, we're just going to select the data once again. Conditional formatting. Over here, top and bottom rules. Notice that we have above average and we have below average. So we're going to click below average. Automatically selecting them on our behalf. You see that? And we're going to color them yellow. And we don't have yellow on the presets. So we're going to go custom, fill, yellow. And we're going to click it. Click. And now notice that we have now the selected uh, on the average as color yellow and top five items as blue. And that changes 
dynamically so if it, this one instead of 40 it was 134 notice that it will switch color and it's going to drop the lowest which in this case will be 99 and you did you see that and 99 is not on the average so that's why it's white but I'm going to undo to leave things as they were okay now we're going to now to the views column on the views column say pick between 200 or 400 and color them green so you know the drill the drill is to select the data click on conditional formatting and the tops and bottom we don't have nothing there what about highlight sales oh notice that we have a between rule here so we're going to select between between what 200 and 400 so we don't have any 200 here so we selected 200 and over here we're going to select 400 let's take a quick look and seems like it's speaking the right numbers but notice on the 400 then what about if I change 39 to 400 oh. do you think we pick it so let's select uh, that's going to be green let's click custom format and select green again if it, you will have a 200 and a 400 and it doesn't pick it you will probably want to go here to 199 and over here to 399 or actually 401 or something like that to pick up the edges of the uh, but in all data that's not needed because we don't have a 200 or 400 but if we you have it then you will have to play with those numbers click ok now category select food and R and color then red ok so we're gonna select the data we're gonna click on conditional formatting highlight sales when that equals to what when that equals to food and art ok so highlight sales equal to oh we can only pick one okay so food and art so we're gonna select when equals art and it pick both of them okay i need food too food oh wait a second you can only do one or the other here now both even if you hold the control key yes even that so mm. we have to do something okay so we're gonna say highlight sales equal to we're gonna select art give it a click we select it again it's already selected but select it again highlight sale when equals what wow. we got it we got art we need food food oh we needed to pick the same data twice with different rules so that sometimes is the case so where all these rules are located so if you click on conditional formatting and you click on manage rules you would notice then that we have in this range two rules or in the selected but if you actually say this worksheet the entire worksheet we have all of those rules so far the blue the yellow the green and the two red so pretty fun conditional formatting is powerful especially if we use formula but for now this is the basic um, and you will enjoy that a lot so this is the first exercise at that time you will save it save as and maybe put something at the end like completed dash so you had the uh, exercise still intact and then try to do it again for yourself and just create rules 
change the rules yourself. I'm not going to say that, so I'm going to just exit again. But this is that was this, and these are the tasks that we completed for this exercise. Okay, good. Let's move on. So I'm going to close it and I'm going to say this. Now, I am on the second chapter two, lesson two exercise. This is lab two dash one, help today personal loans report. So this is kind of review. Let's first notice that we have column A, B, C, D, and E. E is my last column. Okay, great. Let's take care of our title and subtitle. So select in the middle with a white cross, drag it to E, look on sales styles, look a title, merge and center to center the title. We can go further by selecting a background for that, maybe a little dark green the text doesn't appear very nice so I'm gonna bold it and still I'm gonna change it maybe to light dark blue looks good and the phone I'm gonna increase it to 20 We did a bunch of steps, so I'm gonna apply the same formatting to this subtitle. I'm gonna select my brush paint, format painter, click the marching ants, I'm copying all the information and I have a pointer, a brush. I click on it. But let's say then if it would be multiple columns, I had to click and hold as I drag so all of them get applied. But what I'm going to apply here is in A2, so I just click on that one time. Click. I have my subtitle. Too big, it's taking over the title. So I'm going to change it to maybe 16. 16 is nice. Okay. Great. Oh, we have customer, previous balance, payment, monthly, and so on. The first thing that I notice here is that my customer, I will have to indent it a little bit so he knows that it's part of customer. So I select that. I'm going to go to the home tab on the third group alignment. We have the left indent and the right indent. So we're going to click on the right indent and notice that indented. So that items are now part of customers. It's more obvious. Now we're going to select customers all the way to current balance. We're going to apply a style. We're going to click sell styles and we're going to click on heading four. That's good. I'm going to just increase it one more to 12. Oh, the other. Great. Uh, total, average, lowest, and highest. I'm going to create a custom to all of these. So I'm going to select first the uh, total. What I mean by custom style is that I'm going to choose a preset. I'm just going to adjust it myself. Like you see, like if I apply that, look how that looks like. That's nice. Okay. So I'm going to apply that one. What about if I want a green line? Okay, so I'm going to select it. The color is going to be dark blue for the font. The line itself is going to be dark green. I think it's this one. Oh. Let's do it again. So escape. So color, line color, dark green. I 
okay and I'm gonna you could make it a little thicker if you want to so if you have a problem with this using that little pencil the other way to do it you click on the grid click on more borders green you can click on these little buttons that takes it out and if you want to make it thicker you click on this thicker one add it again and you could have picked a different color if you wanted to click ok and voila that's there I'm gonna notice that this one is uh, increase the row height to 20-25 so I'm gonna copy that I'm gonna add these guys the same nice looking good okay uh, let's do the formatting of the test so previous balance payments monthly current balance all of this is currency uh, so we're gonna select all of this currency and we're gonna select currency okay uh, we're gonna be adding our formula here to continue uh, with that so the monthly fee I have my cheat sheet right here so the monthly fee is 5% so 5% okay oh So we're gonna say equal the previous balance time five percent. So and then we will have to add that to the payment for the current balance. Okay. So we're gonna click enter and based on this amount we have a fee of eighty. We're just gonna either do this, which is using the fuel handle going downward. Or the easier way which is going to the right corner when it becomes a black cross double click only going downwards but notice that it went too far so sometimes you got to be careful with that okay so in this case I just gonna go and use that so it doesn't change the format for the rest current balance current balance again is the B minus C D C4 my okay so current balance is this minus this minus this so this is the payment and this is the fee based on that amount so you subtract these two to that so we can do it this way like this equal balance minus the payment minus the fee and because it goes from left to right you will do that fine other people will prefer to do it in a different way let me show you how but you see it's now 1400 a different way to do it is then instead of subtracting everything I can just add these two together by this C4 plus D4 which is add these two together and then subtract it from the previous balance it's the same identical thing it's you, you choose what you want it's the same thing and then we're gonna just scroll down using the field handle and there you have it right now we have this done now we're going to work on these formulas right here okay so total we know total total we just go to the home tab click on the Greek e on the top right give it a click the shortcut again is out plus equal hit enter and because we're gonna do the same thing on these other columns, we're gonna use the field handle to move to the right. 
and that give us those prices nice we're going to continue like that using average we're going to click on average we're going to say equal a b e r there you go average we can double click one way to do it i prefer tab into the formula so i'm going to tab I'm going to select the range, which is B4, dragging down to B12. Close the parentheses, Shift 0. Enter. Lowest. Yeah. And well, before going to the lowest, let's do the same thing. We're going to use the fill handle and then move it to the right. So out of all of these, which is that you divide that by the number of nine and it give you one thousand that's the average that's how you is the sum of the items divided by the numbers of item equals average now lowest is what is the lowest number in that list so we're going to say equal we will type lowest but it's not it's min m my n for the minimum double click or tab I prefer tab select the range close the parenthesis shift 0 close parenthesis enter and that give me the lowest obviously I could have picked up myself but if it's a long list it will be a little harder S copy the formula to the right yes nice over here 72 over here 23 174 so highest yes when I say this is called maximum so max double click or tab I prefer tab select the range close the parenthesis enter and copy the formula to the right nice let's say that I want to create a pie or bars I'm going to create a bars of my uh, customers select the first range release the mouse hold down the control key pick or select the second range notice that it did equivalent no it's no additional cell click on the insert tab recommend the chart and that's what I want I want to select a bar so I'm going to click OK and it put it on the white area when it's full arrows I can drag this to the right I can change the title by clicking on the title I'm gonna say equal let me make this smaller this button is to make the more visible so I'm gonna make it smaller I'm gonna say equal and I'm gonna click on monthly loan balancing analysis not on the top one but on the second one and then I'm going to hit enter look what happens it just put it on the so if I change this this uh, to something else it will reflect it here nice I'm going to delete these uh, lines and the thing at the bottom I'm going to put it a little better so I'm going to select this one at the bottom give it one click when it's selected click on the delete key now click on the lines you might have to click it twice you see the select the square around the line click again now those are the lines click delete now we're going to click on the plus we're going to select data labels notice that it put them there already and that looks nice already which is perfect and then I click outside and there is my and you can create more as you learn on previous chapter but I'm going to just add a little line that is more solid on the right that is a little so I'm going to click on format notice that we have shape field I can actually add a field to this maybe great you see what I mean like that you can remember not to cover you all the colors of oh, that looks good same thing with this one Okay, that's how you add a feel to the graphic. But the shape outline, I'm going to increase the weight 
two one and I'm going to go back and I'm gonna select the color of that line to be red gold dark green I'm gonna select the dark green for that oh black you can pick a black too but I'm gonna select dark green so there you have it that's uh, chapter 2 review notice that I say sheet 1 I want to make it or uh, help today personal loans or just call it personal loans so to do that you double click on the sheet and type personal loans and you have to hit enter if you click outside it will not take it so enter now we took it at that time you can save it remember that when you save as you want to put something at the end like completed or something like that so you can go back to your exercise okay so that's the review of chapter two we're going to move on to chapter three or oh, some preliminary stuff that we have to learn i'll see you in a bit okay let me close this chapter three okay on chapter three let's look at the files so i already downloaded the student three and we have a couple things that we had to learn beforehand so inside the files you're gonna see something called exercise double click and that file <coughs> excuse me notice that we have a couple tab that are has been named in our behalf and right now in goes it but we're gonna first click on relative absolute reference and we have some hashes which mean the numbers are is doesn't visibly visibly see uh, or fit in the column so we're gonna expand the column B and now you can you get to see it nice okay so what is relative okay so we will approach by our boss and ask her to do this um, based on the price and the quantity and based on the sale to create a sale tax and then a total or for this amount okay so this one was left there so i don't know why but let's delete it because that's wrong <laughs> okay now let's click on sell tax many of you will make this mistake and I'm gonna do it intentionally to show you what you should not do you probably gonna do something like this equal you're gonna select 219 right and then that time the quantity time the tax right so you will do something like times quantity times a percent you hit enter and that give you a sell task of this than this than that and then if you use look copy down it will give you a uh, more or less based on the price and the quantity notice that 399 was higher but the quantity was lower so it was just 3.19 text this one was lower but the higher quantity increased so what is the issue here the issue here is that when you look if the a percent is in the formula what happens if uh, the governor changed to 9% tomorrow and you have 1,000 row? Ah, you say, ah, I just find and replace. Yes, find and replace, but there's always an opportunity for errors. Um, if uh, your job depends on having this accurate, you probably want to make sure that it's accurate. So the correct way to do it is not to embed this number so if a number 
the golden rule in Excel is that if it's something change or might change in the future to use a reference so what is a reference a reference is a location so when i say equals and i click over here on the eight percent which is e1 notice that it didn't put eight percent it put e1 e1 is the location but when i hit enter it give me the eight percent but if I now click and change that to 9, like the governor says, and hit enter, notice that I didn't have to change this because it read the reference, it read the location. Regardless of the number, after it knows the location, it's going to update the value of that location immediately. So that's what we want to do. Now, so let's do that here. So, oh, on this one. So what we had to do here is that we're gonna select that a percent delete it, and we're gonna now click on nine percent, and we're gonna hit enter. And now notice that now it works as so. I'm gonna change it to a. Okay. Now. We're talking about relative uh, relative numbers. Okay, so look how relative works. Relative, I explained in a previous chapter, is that it's the default in Excel, is that Excel automatically, if you move down, it adds one to the rows, because you, you see you go from three to four to five, look over here you see this number and as i move down six seven so e, every time you add, add a formula and it's relative if you move down you add one to the rows now when you move left or right it's based on the columns so automatically we switch from h to g and then we if it's to the right which switch h to i so because that's the default version of excel or uh, the tendency here is that b is going to change to what when i move that b3 is going to change to b4 c3 is going to change to c4 and e1 is going to change to e2 what's on e2 total not that eight percent and then e2 is total so this formula if i actually try to copy this down it will give me errors because it doesn't have the formula and that's a common mistake of individuals that are new to excel that doesn't understand how excel cell reference works so to fix the formula what we have to do is to tell excel to tell excel that you don't want to move out of that formula we have full versions and you use the function key F4 to move through them. I'm going to say equal. And I'm going to click over here. Now, when you don't see dollar signs, that means that it's right now relative then it moves and increases based on the movement of the cell if it goes down the one increases to two if you move off it decreases okay uh, now if you move left it's going to be g1 if you move right it's going to be i1 because right now g is to the left i is to the right if you go down it's going to say two three and so on okay now when we press f4 one time look what happens e put dollar signs in front of the e and dollar signs after the e so this version is called absolute reference i'm going to copy that paste it now if you press F4 again, that was the first time. F4 again. 
Now it switches the dollar sign to the middle. This time, what that one says in the middle is that the row will not change. In other words, may the row remain static. Do not make any changes to the row. So over here, this is mix. And precisely, row is locked. One more, we have two more of these. I'm gonna. So, again, notice that it has dollar sign, dollar sign. This one, the dollar sign is in the middle. This one. So, the third time you press F4, it switches now the dollar sign to in front of the letter. That means that the column will not move to left or right. It will remain locked. So again, this is mix. But this is column is locked. And the last one, guess what? So absolute mix, mix. So if I press F4 one more time, it will change it back to relative, which is the default. So relative, which is the default. So this is relative. The default. So those are the four. Now, if to fix this formula now, now that we know, and because it's an E1, we don't want it to what move down. So we want it lock in row one so it doesn't move down. Sometimes that's all you need to do, but if you don't want it to also move to the left or move to the F, so you have to make complete absolute. So you have two options to fix this formula right here. The first option is to lock the row. How do we lock the row? By putting a dollar sign in front of the one. So we're going to click on that cell and we're going to press F4, one. That will work because that's absolute location. So let's do that one first, and then I'll show you how to lock the, the row. We're going to hit enter. And now if we bring this down, it should work fine. And it does. You see that? Now, I'm going to click over there again. I'm going to press S4. Now you put it on the middle. What's the middle? Row is locked. Well, that's what we want. Row is locked. So, so it doesn't go two, three, four, and so on. So this one also will work. And when we click over here, and then it's just in the middle, I scroll down, it will also work. So this one and this one will work. These two will not work. You want to, you want to see why? So let's do it again. So now if I put the dollar sign and lock the column, so I'm locking this column, but I'm not preventing and not preventing uh, and not preventing from moving down so it will give me errors watch you see that because I just log in the column now the row 
and relative it will be the same which is the problem that we had before so to fix it you can press a four to make it absolute or lock the roll i'm going to leave it at absolute click over here so it fixed now to finalize this so we will have to multiply these two add the tax and that will give you a total so we're going to say equals that times quantity plus sale tax enter we scroll it down zoop adjust the column the total i'm going to use the shortcut out equal for the grand total hit enter and that's the total now does it work well let's see if we just switch this little guy right here to now seven it should be a lower number hit enter and other than everything changed we don't have to do anything this is the power of a cell so refresh and all the numbers changes immediately so we can evaluate and determine what's better for the company okay what about if we go increase to 10 percent same thing now increases all the numbers if we bring it back to eight hit enter that's the original number so that's it so that's relative mix and absolute reference now mixed reference is a little bit trickier so i'm going to have an another uh preliminary comments here to help you understand mixed reference okay so i have jeans that cost 60 dollars those are nice jeans by the way shirts cost 40 dollars which also <laughs> nice shirts but in certain months of the year january february and march they got certain percentage off so we want to create a little table then add then give me the correct values for these two based on the months okay i guess we can do that we say no problem so we're gonna say equal so we click on jeans and we subtract the percentage right so this next formula you're gonna feel a little bit and uh uneasy about it but it's true so what is 100 percent 100 percent is equal to one because one is a whole and when you have whole you have 100 percent if you have an apple you have a 100 percent one apple or you have one apple but when you cut the apple in half now out of the 100 percent one apple you only have half of an apple so in other words what i'm saying is that when you want to take 20 percent out of a number you subtract 100 percent which is one minus this number actually this is multiplication so one minus 20 percent equals 80 percent and 80 percent then the price it give you the leftover because you're multiplying this by 80 percent it give you the discount price already let's stress then i'm going to click enter oh so you see so in january instead of 60 i pay 48 dollars because i have a 20 percent does it work if i do the formula let me see if i scroll down 40 wait a second it remains the same it didn't work something is wrong okay let's look at the formula so it says b4 b4 so when it moves down it's gonna go to b5 it did and now over here on the good formula times one minus b9 times one minus b10 
What's Bitang? Bitang is nothing. Oh, I understand, teacher. So it's moving down. We don't want it to move down. We want it to be sticking there. So if we don't want it to move down, which is row, and this is in column B, oh, so it's moving from here to here. So from 9 to 10, we have to lock what? We have to lock the row on the formula. Okay, so let's do that. So let's go to the original formula. And over here on B9, we're going to lock the row. Remember, locking the row is the dollar sign in the middle. So you press F4 or you type it in, but it's for give you the cycles to the function. So it's not full. One more time in the middle. Oh, again, if you don't like the F4, you can just type the dollar sign in yourself. So, so far, let's test it. Let's, we're doing this to test it. So we're going to hit enter. And now we're going to copy the formula down. Wait a second. It works now. Yeah. That's a word to the right. In other words, uh, I want these genes to turn me January, February, and March. So let's do that. So we're gonna go to the right. And let's select those two columns. Oh, it didn't work. Why? Let's look at the formula. So when you move from, the formula was in B, when it moves to the right, which the right of B? C, here. And C doesn't have any values. Oh, wait a second. So we will have to also lock the column. In addition to locking this row, we also have to lock this column to make this work. Great. So let's go here. And we have this one taken care, which is that it's locking the row. We don't have to do anything there. But on this one, we don't want it to move either to A or to C. We want that B to lock in place. How do we do that? We press C. If you're going to use the F4, you're going to press it one, twice, three times to bring the dollar sign in front of the column. If you just type in it yourself, make sure that you type the dollar sign in front of the column. We're going to hit enter. Now, let's go down to see if it remains good yes that works let's go to the right oh mm. so let's select these two to make it visible wait a second that one works too why 80 percent and much is only cost me those gene 12 dollars that's excellent that's a walk down perfect so the formula that we did type it we locking column b you see this, we're looking column b and over here we're looking row nine and we can extract those values and put it right where they belong another exercise we're going to create one formula here that we can drag down and then drag to the right and it will complete this math table for us if you, you know, my table is then you multiply this by this, and it's going to give you that. Then you multiply this by that, and it gives you that, and so on. Okay, let's do the formula. We're going to click equal, one, times, one. And that should give me one. Now, if, it, if the formula works, I can drag it down, and it's going to give me up to ten. But it did not why let's take a look so e7 which is that d18 which is that okay what was the other formula e18 was e18 e18 will be oh this but when we move down that increases and that's why the formula doesn't work we need to get it stuck on this okay so let's do that first we need to get it stuck in what row 17 so we're gonna click on the formula e17 and we're gonna lock the 17 in place so we're gonna now press s4 twice one two that's it 
and then we're going to hit enter. Mm, let's copy the formula to see if it works. Wait, that one works perfectly. That's nice. But now the question is we have to be able to do it down and we also have to do it right to see if it feels correctly. So we're going to feel it right. Oh my gosh, it did not work. Because 3 times 10, this should be 30, not 60. And 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 6, 6. But what about here? 3 times 1 is 6. No, it should be 3. So something is wrong. Let's take a look at what's happening. So going down is working. Going to the right is not working. Why? We're going to click on the second one. Note that and say F17. What's F17? So that is correct. That's the one it should be. E18. E. Oh, E move from D to E. So we need to lock the column as well. So we're going to go back to the original formula. And this column right here, the D, which is this, we don't want it to we don't want it to move, so we're going to click over here. We're going to press F4. Not absolute, no. One more time. Not the row. One more time. The column. That's it. And we're going to hit Enter. So we had the row 17 log, and we had the column D locked. Great. So let's now move this formula down it works now move it to the right yes everything worked with one formula and the formula is that one locking the row 17 locking the d column that is mixed reference great now Two more things that we got to cover here before the exercise and is the if statement. The if statement is an overused and very good uh, formula. Many people overuse it when they are other formula that can do a better job. After you learn it, you're going to like it. Okay, so how this work? For instance, I'm going to now click over here next to John I'm gonna say equal if double click on if or tap into the formula so we're gonna check for a logical test and have to say true or false so we're gonna say hmm click on 19 and we're gonna ask ourselves is C6 which is 19 greater than 18. Which is you are considered an adult. Comma. If that is true. Then we're going to put quote. You are an adult. Comma, what about if it's not true? We're going to say, you still a minor. And we're going to close the parenthesis and we're going to hit enter. And notice that because it's 19, you are an adult. If you scroll down, you are an adult, adult, and 16 minor, 15 is a minor, 21 an adult, 20 an adult nice so you can actually ask questions and get answers like that using the if statement and i just ask this mm, kind of silly questions you know for, to prove the point but something important if the employee makes so much money does it qualify for a bonus yes or no yes the the make a lot of money they're giving them a bonus no didn't meet the the, the quota don't give it the bonus. 
and so on. And that's what we're going to use it for the exercise. But in the state of California, oh, you are 18, you're considered an adult, but you cannot actually drink until you are 21. So how do we combine those two together? So we're going to go to the column E, and we're going to do another check that if this person is, in fact, able to drink. So we're going to say equal. We're going to click on the C6. Are you greater than 21? If it does true, great. Let's have a drink. What about if it is still a minor? Sorry. Let's drink orange juice. And hit enter. Oh, it's telling me that I have a problem. Let's see what happened. So, you type one, shows, give it, okay, let's take a look. So we have 21, that is correct. Oh, we didn't actually do what? The formula. <laughs> so we had to actually say, if tab, then do that. Silly me. Okay, we're gonna hit enter. And now notice that that person is eating is drinking orange juice today and this one this person right here wait a second but this person is 21 21 is allowed to drink and they say nah why okay and um, and if this person will say 18 let's say I change this to 18 what happens to is still considered a minor. Why? So we had some problem with the, uh, the both of these formulas. So we're gonna click over here, and it says greater than 18, but it doesn't check if it's 18. You can fix this by saying greater than 17. In other words, you are 18. Or you can also say if you are greater or equal 18. She hit enter and you scroll down like this and now you see that it's working correctly. Over here, same thing, we say equal, we hit enter, fix the formula and now it gets fixed. How can you do the checks all at one time? So I'm going to copy this right here. I'm going to bring it down here and over here we're going to combine these two together I know that this is working so I'm going to select this control C escape why why escape because if I click here it follows me so I had to first escape the formula and now click over here paste control V so I had the first part of the formula. Now I know that this also works. So I'm going to click over here. Control C. Escape. Remember, escape. Oh, ne I forgot to let you know that you cannot put an equal sign when you uh, merge two formulas or you have multiple formulas. Only one equal sign, pole formula. So in this second formula, what I'm going to copy is all the way to the if. And I'm going to include the equal signs. I'm going to click the control C, escape, go to this formula. And over here, notice that it says, uh, if you are 18, you are an adult. Great. If you're not, you're a minor. Okay. So, and then, if, he, if he, this person is not 18, we wanted to say minor, but if he's 18, we need to also check for 21. So we're gonna check, add a check on the, on this part. 
why on the on the is true because if it's 18 we need to also check if that person is 21 so if it's not we don't need to check anything there we're going to do control v and paste the other formula this is called a nesting if so if this is true do another check is is this person 18 and also 21 no it's not 21 so then this one kicks in if it's not 18 this one kicks in hit enter not it and say sorry let's drink orange juice today and if i scroll down voila it works as expected again let me show you the formula this is a nested uh, formula this is a single formula single formula these two formulas into nested formula look like this and i can continue nesting formula by using the true statement or the other or the other way you can do it both ways true statement or negative or the true statement or the false statement i in this nest day, i use the true statement to check for this and this so that's the if statement great job let's move on now to goal six goal six okay so why would you use goal six so goal six over here we're using to calculate some payments and the actual or uh, i think i'm gonna skip goal sick because i want to explain it to you when i am in front of you not on this one or uh, let's move on and we're not going to use this one yet i want to explain a little time on this one i'm going to come back to that so let's close this one you're welcome to save it i'm not going to save it so i'm going to close it And now we're gonna go into the demo. Okay, so we are back now. Um, I'm gonna be doing the demo. For the demo, we're gonna go to chapter three and we're gonna do the for your to go financial projection. Where we're gonna learn how to do uh, goal sick uh, scenarios and stuff like that. So go ahead and open that. I already have my open right here. Uh, I'm going to also open a cheat sheet that I have for the formulas. <clears throat> okay. So here we go. Uh, so this is the six month financial projection and the demo for chapter three okay we're gonna do basic formatting just like we have learned in the past so we have one to h h is the last column so i'm gonna select the title you know how to do that we're gonna click on merge and center we're gonna then go to the preset and select title or oh, I think I'm gonna go to page layout and change the thing to get different colors I'm gonna go to retrospect okay notice that thing changes I'm gonna go back to the home tab I'm gonna add a brown or oh, background I'm gonna change the font to white I'm going to bold it and I'm going to increase the size to 24. I'm going to do the full map painter, apply that to the sub uh, <clears throat> title. I'm going to make it a little smaller 16. Great. Now I'm going to uh, select my labels here go to sales styles and i'm going to make them heading to with that little line there and because we're using i'm using the uh 
theme is applying a theme to the same colors great now over here we have revenue cost of good and margin and over here expenses we have bonuses commissions to total expenses okay <clears throat> so again these are items from the expenses so i'm going to go to the home tab use the indent and i'm going to indent it one time so it looks the way it should look uh, this right here are assumptions that um, based on this assumption we can make changes and get something later we're going to do this uh, and change it in a bit okay uh, so we have revenue cost of good and then we have a total gross margin okay now uh, in here on the what if assumption I'm gonna apply a outside borders I'm gonna select what if assumption select the two columns a and b and I'm gonna merge them together I'm gonna give it a 16 and I'm gonna add a background of dark and white I'm gonna bold it okay I'm gonna divide these two columns I'm gonna click on mold borders and select the center line give it a click I'm gonna this one do a right align so next to the numbers also I going to make a background to it a little lighter then uh, margin is a percent so I'm gonna change that percent to percent so I'm gonna apply the percent other than a 78 but I want to also display the zero in case it's 0 0.65 and so on by adding two decimal numbers click on this below the drop down one and two bonus sell revenue is currency so we're gonna select currency commission kills all of these are percent so i'm going to select percent and again i'm going to add two decimal values to them all right um, this is 11 i think i'm going to increase these numbers to 12. oh the other one sorry so a little more visible okay these are the numbers that change and we can actually evaluate the numbers of above so this is important we're going to come back to this later okay so over here we have starting with this all the way to six these are going to be currency so we're going to do currency And we're doing a six month projection so we're projecting something based on the something that we're gonna do okay now on the expenses this line is nothing it's just a title so we can actually go here and apply oh yeah I think I like that light background so it's not interfering with the other okay okay this all the way to expenses it's also going to be currency total expenses and operating income gonna also be currency let me make this a little large for you guys to see uh -huh. okay nice uh, I'm gonna eliminate some or 
this little icon here on the ribbon is to give me more space you don't have to do this this give you more real estate space you see and then when I go to the home they appear when they step out they hide if you don't like it that way you can come back and pin it and then remains but for me and to get more space for the recording I'm gonna leave it like that okay so the first thing that we're going to do is that we're gonna use this formula I'm gonna let me copy that formula I'm gonna explain it okay and that formula goes right here okay notice then that formula uses b4 b4 is the revenue on april and it's multiplying that by a percentage remember the one which is a 100 percent minus b19 wow we're using something called absolute location b19 which is this one is a margin so in other words uh, 100 minus 77 equals what 33 percent we can actually check the result of this by pressing f9 if you press f9 oh uh, it give you the result let me see that f9 notice that it give you a 22.5 percent again you can always evaluate that's what i was doing evaluating this statement right here okay so margin so cost of good the cost of good is a 20 percent of my margin so if i have it if i spend in 77 in margin oh uh, the cost of the cost of good is the leftover okay now my gross margin is then b4 minus b5 so we say equal b4 minus b5 and enter so because this is also a total i'm going to highlight it like this as well so i'm going to go to the home select the background i'm going to bold it and it's looking good so far okay now the next one is a, an if statement and we determine that an if statement is just when you want to ask a question so what question am i asking is the revenue greater or equal than b20 b20 is, is five thousand if it's greater or equal than b21 oh, what is my b21 it says 60,000 then give them the bonus 5,000 b20 if it's not given zero okay so we're gonna copy that formula let's explain it one more time on the bonus okay if the statement is this one is b or greater or equal than b21 b21 is 60 b20 so what is before before is the revenue that it was generated on april you see now it's not greater than 60 but this one is greater than 60 this one this one that one okay so if it's not greater than 60 give it a zero but if it's greater than 60 give it a b20 b20 is the five thousand dollar bonus so the answer for this will be zero because i only have forty five thousand and it's correct so now let me move this down here the projection and my total gross margin so let's do one at a time here in my total i'm going to select all equal and that give me the sum to my left i'm going to scroll it down and i'm going to also bold this one let me put the same formatting by using the format painter 
apply it to that cell. Great, we're looking good. So this was my if statement to check for if it is revenue is greater than 60 and assign a 5,000 bonus. I can drag that to the right. And notice that I have three full bonuses and two, bo two months that I didn't get any bonuses. Commission. How is the commission determined? Again, we're gonna look at this and we're gonna look at the commission, right? So that commission is determined like this. So B4 multiplying by the commission. Kiosk enter, let's do this manual. B4 multiply by we're looking at kiosk rental. Remember that we have to use the absolute. We don't want it to travel left, right, nothing. So one press on F4. One press on F4, we change the to dollar sign and we hit enter let's do the same for marketing so B4 times click on marketing we press F4 enter last one we're gonna say B4 times equipment remember that we're gonna lock it in place and hit enter so we have our variables done the total expenses is just a sum of this right here that's my total expenses and I'm gonna also give them this look at my total expenses so I'm gonna select that click on home for map painter and apply notice Notice that now I'm applying, I'm gonna apply and dragging because I'm gonna apply to all of those cells. Okay, so we're gonna say home. Click on the Greek E, it will read up and grab the numbers, hit enter, and automatically do it. Now that we have all of these formulas right here, and we're gonna do the same thing in these areas. So we just can actually do it one at a time, or we can actually grab all of them, and then move it to the right, and release. Over here is just a sum, so we're gonna click on the cell, home, Greek E, it looks to the left, grab it. We're gonna copy that down. It did it. We lost the, the formatting, so we click on this cell, format painter, paint it over. Nice. Now, we are done with this. Now, how do we use these what if assumptions variables? Okay, so we are gonna go to the data tab. This is the first time we're going to the data tab. And then on the what if analysis, we're gonna click on goal sick. And over here, let me make this a little smaller so you get to see. I'm gonna cancel and make this a little smaller. Get to see a little bit, okay, there. Okay, now, oh, what I'm gonna ask this, oh, we also need to do one more, I'm sorry, before the goal six. So we're gonna select this formatting right here. Click on home, format painter, click on operating, all the way to the right 
and the formula for here is what is my operating income your margin minus your expenses so we say equal that minus that enter for April it was 12,000 now scroll down notice that increase and this is the final total here so we say equal this plus this hit enter okay okay now notice that over here I have a operating income of 13 and you say hmm oh, I'm, I'm looking at the different months and I say man oh April is also okay months you know 12,000 oh, July July was a good month so oh, and then August and then in September it started dropping again so I have a projection that opera is gonna be that much then in May I'm gonna probably do this then August is uh, but because July is right what would I have to do to make 25,000 in July 25,000 what would I have what what can I do to make 25,000 in July Okay, so that type of question you ask Excel, you click on the data and you click on what if analysis. Click on goal sick. I selected the cell first. So it's set there to what? 25, 1, 2, 3, and then by changing what? Hmm, what about if my, if I change the bonus? if I lower or uh, to make more let's see so if I click OK Excel automatically will analyze everything and notice then the bonus drop from 5,000 to 650 uh, people are gonna be upset that, that month people are gonna be upset on that month but that's analysis that you can actually do so if you click on cancel things go back um, what about if I try to increase this to 15,000 so again I'm gonna go to data what if analysis goal sick change that to 15,000 by changing what hmm not the bonus I want let's take the bonus away uh, what about the commission if we minimize the commission so click OK ah, and that's not too bad look the commissions we just lower it five percent and it should be good to go so the way you do this evaluation is that after you do that uh, you want to copy this whole tab into the next one and then based on your analysis you can label them lowering the margin in uh, lowering the bonus and so on and then you can present that to your uh, supervisor or manager and they can make a decision so this is uh, the project in chapter 3 we learn in bunch of stuff the if function we learn uh, self reference we learn the uh, goal seek formula so all of this we're gonna learn and it's very interesting how we actually use these uh, variables to make decisions based on the company's needs and you know you can then start recommending to your company what you can do when they ask you we, we need to make this much this or we need to lower the commissions on this and so on and so on okay so uh, remember that uh, so I hope you enjoyed this class uh, we're going to review it again on the next course and have a good day. Okay, bye-bye.